always have a pretty wide array of things going on. Of course, still you know older coyotes. You know, we, oh yeah. You know, do GM stuff. We do Hemi stuff as well. Even do you know traditional race um, big block Chevy. Oh, yeah. You know, some billet heads going on. So it's not like we just do a little pocket or you know just one engine or two engines. You know, we we do pretty much everything in the world of you know performance yeah, aftermarket. That's so. sizable valves there, <laughs> it is. especially when you start comparing them to you know some modular stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. You know, one thing that we've had a lot of people talking about, right, is obviously Godzilla. You know, what's going to happen with that? Where is it going? Um, you know, we sort of did start development a long time ago, and we're still continuing with it. But we wanted to see how the rest of the market plays, right? You rewind time on, like, the 6.2. Um, it's a super popular platform for us. The rest of the industry pretends that the 6.2 overhead cam doesn't exist. Um, so we didn't necessarily want to be on our lone island. We wanted to make certain that this was going to be something a little bit more mass market. So that's where we're at right now is we're continuing on with our 7.3 development. This is one of our, you know, cylinder heads that's mm -hmm. purchased and tended to be trashed to see yep. what we can uh, learn from it and, you know, improve upon. And then what you have beside it here, <laughs> it looks very familiar. <laughs> yeah, similar. we did, did want to, you know, point this out, right? A lot of the stuff, you look at it at a glance, you know, to the average person, you probably wouldn't immediately know that these heads are that much different. There's yeah. a very, very common, similar ideas going on behind them. Um, you know, Ford obviously has their approach on it, and there's some things that we like better on it. You know, and, and it being port fuel has its yeah. own advantage compared to the DI for the GMLT stuff. But, you know, we just see how how things uh, get to a point where to make them better, you almost end up having a lot of similarities, you know, because there's there are more than one way to skin a cat, yeah. but... You know, at the end of the day, it still is, ends up skinned, right? So it's pretty cool to see just how direct the path is to the valves on the 7.3. Yeah. And then it's a little more circuitous going over to the LT. And, you know, both of these are just as cast. You guys haven't worked your magic on right. the one yet. But you can see sort of the bump here and the LT head. Some other stuff going on, whereas Godzilla head all these ports are basically just wide open this thing looks i mean as good an as cast port as i've seen on just about anything yeah you can tell this was done specifically for one goal in mind it had one end set where this is like hey there's going to be six different engines that yeah. use this style of head yeah um you know so this is a has a few more trade-offs and all that than what the 7.3 does absolutely but, it, but it's funny if you look at port shape i mean that's yeah your that's pretty design. similar <laughs> i mean yeah chamber shape yeah yeah there's yeah. definitely a lot but you know yeah. differences nonetheless right yeah. and then the same deal if you look at the um yeah up here in the top yeah the rocker arm configuration right you yeah. know again very similar Bear. yep you know so but then we can also look at a small block Ford head and how similar would that be can. to an LS? I mean, right? There, people figured out you can put LS heads on small block Fords. Not the easiest yeah. task, but it, it's been done, right? So you do end up getting that things come full circle, yeah. right? There was a lot of, hey, GM copied the small block Ford with the LS, and now it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, a little bit of full circle, but same well, thing with goes with the exhaust. Yeah. But, you I know. mean, that's what you do is you take the best of what everybody's doing and make it even better. It's not like this is a direct ripoff. I mean, it's... No, you're right. It's improved everywhere that you would want to improve yeah. it for its intended application, which is to move a big truck, big heavy loads, and it then is. just to be super tough. And you can look at even... Just the way this thing mounts to the deck, the deck surface is so much larger on the, I mean, just, there's so yeah. much going on. Yeah, there's a lot more contact patch on the actual head, you know, the deck, and and that's a, that's a good thing, never yeah. a bad thing. And then, of course, you have to have some old tube we stuff. Do. No, we do. You know, what's funny is, you know, the whole industry is Coyote, Godzilla, yeah. right, but... We've seen a huge resurgence on three valves. We've seen two valves. You know, of course, four valves never really completely yeah. went away, but you know, the softer markets like two valve and three valve, all of a sudden, 
you know, people yeah. are doing those because, I mean, you get a high mileage S197 Coyote car, mm -hmm. they still command a premium. And yeah. people are learning, hey, I can buy a three valve for half the money and use it and get Coyote like performance. Yeah. So, you know. Well, I think that's uh, long enough for this video. Yeah. But big thanks to Andy and Livernoise for walking us around and showing us all this stuff. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. You know, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff if you don't want to miss out. We've got some more videos coming from Livernoise Motorsports. So subscribing to the channel will make sure you don't miss it. Appreciate you guys checking us out. See you next time.